Eric Howe is the director of the Lake Champlain Basin Program, which oversees the basin's water quality, fisheries, wildlife, and cultural resources in partnership with New York, Vermont, and Quebec. Welcome. It is so nice to have you back again. Thank you, Tom. It's great to be here again. We just saw the field work being done this summer to try to determine how much closer uh, the Round Gobi is to Lake Champlain. And as we heard, they have now made it into the Champlain Canal, the southernmost tip of the Champlain Canal near that first lock. Yes, they're a little closer than I'm comfortable with, but yes, they, they still have a ways to go before they can uh, migrate upstream to, to and make it into Lake Champlain. And in the meantime now, what steps are being taken by, by you folks, by fisheries experts. From the basin program perspective, we have worked with New York DEC to hire a, uh, a new staff position. Um, so this was, a, this was a, a brand new position approved in our budget uh, this year to who's, and that person is focused entirely on, on outreach for invasive species along the Champlain Canal Corridor. And, and what are some of the concerns about the, the Round Gobi? Yeah, so with Round Gobi, there is a number of concerns. This one is, we have um, sort of an informal tier system of, uh, for invasive species, and Round Gobi is on the, one of the top tiers, like up near Godzilla level, sort of, um, and, and, and probably a more practical sense, I, I think it's closer to uh, uh, the zebra mussel uh, impact that it had in Lake Champlain. R Round Gobi can um, carry a virus, it's called viral hemorrhagic septicemia, which we shorten to VHS, and that is a disease that uh, it can seriously affect our, our trout and salmon populations in Lake Champlain. Um, the other uh, concern is on the bass population, and this is actually one of the myths that's out there about round goby, is that the bass, so the bass feed uh, heavily on round goby, and so uh, the first few years that round goby invades a lake, the bass predate or eat the, a lot of round goby, they grow up, they get big quickly. So you have these trophy sized bass um, within the first few years, but eventually the round goby uh, will win the battle, so to speak, and, and they eat heavily on the bass eggs and their bass nests. And that's really the big concern is eventually the round goby will deplete the population of bass in the lake. And right now we're one of the you know top whatever, 10 or something lakes in the country for, for bass fishery. So um, we have a really healthy, very strong bass fishery now. And um, there's a potential for that to go away if round goby gets, uh, gets into Lake Champlain. It's been talked about for years trying to find some way to block them from going up the Champlain Canal. Could a barrier uh, be in, installed? And that's been proposed and talked about for decades, really. Yeah, and, and where do things stand on that? Is that at this point now advancing uh, uh, that that idea? It is. Yeah. So, the Basin Program and, and our uh, fiscal agent Nui Pick and the Army Corps of Engineers have been working on a project for the last half dozen years or so to uh, look at different options uh, for uh, preventing invasive species from moving through the Champlain Canal, either into the Hudson or into Lake Champlain. And the first phase of that was just completed by the Corps, early, Army Corps, earlier this year. And uh, they, they found in their, in their report that, that the, the most effective barrier is a full uh, separ hydrological separation of the Hudson and Champlain watershed. So that no water passes between the two, the two uh, drainage systems. And that would, with that would come a lift uh, boat lift that would lift re most recreational vehicles up and over the barrier. They would be decontaminated and then dropped in on the other side of the barrier, depending on which, you know, in, in either direction, if they're moving up or downstream. That would prevent pretty much anything from moving from the Champlain Canal or the Hudson River up through the Champlain Canal and, and into the Lake Champlain. Are you at the study phase or are you ready to start moving into uh uh, beyond that. So we're working with the Army Corps to do a scoping now to, to scope out the next study, which is, a, which is design and engineering for one of these alternatives. We've identified these potential options, and the next step is to start we're looking at designing and feasibility of, of some of these, uh, or one or two of these different options. So probably still three to five years away at the to earliest? Just to get to construction, yes. And then construction, as I understand it, construction could would most likely take place over a winter when the lock when the canal system is closed. You had the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in town recently. They yeah. toured uh, several projects on Lake Champlain, and in fact, they came down to the Champlain Canal to look at these sites where where the the, the boat lift could potentially go. 
And while the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer folks were uh, here for a couple of days, uh, they also went out with you uh, in canoes and kayaks uh, at the Sandbar, the Sandbar State Park. The whole idea is to show them projects that are ongoing to combat invasive uh, species, and in this case, uh, plants, invasive plants, a uh, water chestnut, which is certainly a, a problem in, in various spots around Lake Champlain, especially the southern tip of the lake. You know, we could see the result of the several hundred plants that we had plucked out of the lake that day. Um, and so that was, you know, there, some of these, these folks, from the, particularly from the New York district, who are more engineers than biologists, um, it was a really great experience for them to, to get out on the, on the water and, and paddle around a canoe or a kayak and, and see the, the results of, of the work that the Army Corps has been supporting for, in the case of water chestnut, a very long time, several decades. And did you also visit St. Albans Bay or Missisquoi Bay, areas that this time of year you see a lot of blue-green algae? So the Army Corps um, is part of their watershed restoration program for Lake Champlain. They have a number of projects that either are, are happening or moving forward now or are in the queue to move forward. Um, and what, so there's, there was two that they stopped, two stops that we made on this tour. Uh, one was down in the city of Virgens and uh, we, we looked at the wastewater treatment facility there. And another project was, is up in St. Albans Bay to look at uh, reducing the amount of phosphorus going into the bay, um, and that then eventually will help address, help to address the cyanobacteria or the blue-green algae blooms that happen um, very frequently up there in, in mid to late August. Are you seeing more blue-green algae blooms uh, with the warmer temperatures, uh, and, and is that something that you're preparing for, that in the coming years uh, you could see an increase? Yeah, so that is definitely one of the challenges that we're facing. Um, you know, as we are investing all of these resources, money and people's time and, and volunteer hours into reducing, um, into reducing the amount of uh, nutrients that are going into the lake. We're starting to see reductions in phosphorus going into the lake now, but at the same time, the lake temperatures are warming um, and that, that's definitely not helping our, our cause. We are continuing to see cyanobacteria blooms pop up in the same places that have hap that where we have seen them for the last 10, 15 years or so. Um, they, in my opinion, they seem to be lasting a little bit longer into the, into the summer, so farther into September. Every five years, you release your plan, uh, Opportunities for Action Plan. And you mentioned the, at, at the ceremony uh, that day that climate change is a big focus of, of this new five-year plan. It is, it is, um, for, our, for several reasons. Um, partially because it, climate change is definitely a, a driving factor for the changes that we're experiencing in the lake itself. But climate change, um, whether people think it's human driven or not, has the potential to have a significant impact on the health of Lake Champlain and the way that we experience it now. It could be very different in the next 20, 30 years. Um, so our, our new management plan for the basin, Opportunities for Action, we released it on June 3rd, and it emphasizes climate change very prominently in several of the different elements of, of the plan. 